All right. Right now we're going to be talking about inequalities. Now, before you have heard about equalities. So equalities um, is simply um, a mathematical expression with an equal sign in it. So we can say 4 plus 5 equals 9. And so we know that that's, you know, what that is because 4 plus 5 equals 9. But what if I said x is equal to 9? Well, then I'm just saying that an unknown called x is equal to 9. So, um, so there's, that's equality. And, um, you know, you can, you can use equality uh, in a specific way. But if we want to talk about inequality, that means not equals. So if it's not equals, then there's this thing called the trichotomy axiom that says if two numbers exist and, um, and we don't know what one of them is, then there's three ways of thinking about it. One way of thinking about it is that one number, so we could say x, is less than, uh, say, 5. And um, so x could be less than 5. The trichotomy axiom, that's one of the three. Uh, the other idea is that x could be greater than 5. So that's that. And then also x could be equal to 5. So that's those are the three different ways that we can think about things. And so that's why it's called trichotomy axiom. So inequalities then are less than, uh, greater than, and then there's also these ideas of something called uh, less than or equal to, which the symbol looks like that. So that means less uh, than or equal to. And the other one is going to be greater than or equal to. Greater than. Now, uh, we use a very kind of a silly idea when we talk about uh, these symbols. But um, if you think about um, maybe the, the symbol like this and put some teeth on it, we can say we're talking about the hungry alligator uh, wants to go after the larger meal. So his mouth is opening up toward the larger meal. And so if you ever get confused about that, you can think about the hungry alligator and say he's always going after the greater meal. So this then right here means uh, the greater meal is the five. That means that five is going to be greater than x. In this case right here, x is the greater meal, so x is greater than 5. And so if you ever get confused, you can think about the hungry alligator uh, going after the greater meal. So likewise with less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. And so we're going to be talking about um, how those uh, symbols work. All right. So as we get into graphing uh, ideas, if I wanted to say, I want to graph um, x where x is less than uh, 2, then I would go to a number line, and here's 0, and here's 1, and here's 2, and here's negative 1, and here's negative 2, and I wanted to graph x is less than 2, then I would put a, an open bubble right there on 2, and I would shade to the left, and I would put an arrow to the left. And that's a graphing, then, of the expression x is less than 2. Now let me explain a little bit about less than 2. Less than 2 could not equal 2, right? So if I'm less than 2, then I'm talking about things that are getting right up to 2, but are always less than. So think about this for a second. If we get right up to that bubble right there, what are we really talking about? What are we saying? Isn't that saying maybe 1.9? Um, yeah, that could work. What about 1.99? Yes. And then how about 1.9999999? 1 
Yes, that is still less than 2. What about 2? Well, 2 is not less than 2, so 2 cannot be part of the graph. Um, so I, I'm wanting to kind of convey the idea that you can get infinitesimally close to 2 and be less than as long as you are somewhere to the left of it. And that's what we're really talking about when we say x is less than 2. Now, if I wanted to say less than or equal to, then I would say x is less than or equal to 2. Then I would use the same graph. 1, 2, 1, 2, negative 2. And I would fill in the dot. And that allows me to say x can equal to 2 and everything to the left of 2. So that's the difference between x is less than or equal to 2 and less than 2. Uh, likewise, let's say x is greater than, and let's use a negative number this time, negative 3. Greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's going to look like this. 0, negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, I'm going to the negative 3 and I'm going to put in a filled in dot. And then I'm going to graph to the right of that and that's showing that. I could even put in positive numbers 1, 2, and 3. And there's a legitimate graph of x is any value that is greater than or equal to negative 3. So if I wanted to say x is greater than negative 3 only, then I would do the same graph. And go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Put an open dot on 3 and graph to the right. And then draw an arrow on it. And that says, x is all the values that are greater than negative 3. So could we say x is uh, legitimately negative 2.9? Yes, we can. And what about negative 2.99? Yes, that works too. And so think about that. We're talking about all the numbers and infinitesimally small but greater than negative 3. And so that's how that works. And that's how we graph those things. Now, let's get into talking about um, solving equations, or solving not equations, but inequalities. Um, so now let's have something like x plus 4 is greater than 12. Well, just like you have in inequalities, you can do uh, addition and subtraction uh, of both sides. So we can do that. So we're going to subtract 4 because we want to get the x by itself. And I get x is equal to 4 minus 4 is 0. 12 minus 4 is 8. So the solution to this particular problem is um, x is greater than 8. So if we wanted to graph that, we could say here's 0, here's 8. x is greater than 8. And that would be the graph of the solution. What if we had something like this? 2x minus 7 is greater than 3. Well, you could just say, all right, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And that's 10. And, then, and I've got 2x then is greater than 10. And divide by 2 on both sides. And I get x is greater than well, there we go. X is greater than 5. So if this is 0 and here is 5, then the graph of my solution is going to look like this. And X is greater than 5. Okay, now let's get, let's get uh, into something a little bit more difficult. And actually, before I even do this, I want you to understand something here. Let's just work with numbers for, for a while here and do something like this. If I said I had negative 2, and I said that negative 2 was less than 5, that would be a truthful statement. 
But I want you to see what happens if I multiply both sides by negative 1. Um, negative 1 times 2 is positive 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that symbol back down there. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Okay, so now I'm wanting you to see that we have an untruthful statement. I mean, that's not true, that 2 is less than negative 5. Uh, so we have to fix that. Um, we have to change that now. We can't say, we just if we're multiplying both sides by anything negative, I have to switch the direction of the inequality. So now I have a truthful inequality because 2 is indeed greater than negative 5. So anytime you find yourself multiplying, and which includes dividing as well, multiplying or dividing by a negative number, you must turn your inequality around. So make sure you understand that. So now let's take a look at another example. Let's say uh, negative 3x minus 7 is greater than, let's see, how about 11? So we got negative 7. I'm going to add 7. Add 7. I get 18. And I have negative 3x is greater than 18. So if I divide both sides by negative 3, negative 3, uh, let's see, x is less than, because I have to turn the inequality around, and then divide 18 by negative 3. That gives me negative 6. So x has to be less than negative 6 in order to, be, to make this a truthful statement. Well, let's test that out now, okay? How about if we say x is equal to negative 10? Well, because that's less than negative 6, so let's say uh, negative 3 times negative 10 is minus 7 is greater than 11. Let's see if that worked. Uh, negative 3 times negative 10, negative times negative is a positive. 30 minus 7 is that greater than 11. 30 minus 7 is 23. 23 is greater than 11, and that's a truthful statement. So that works. So here are the rules then for uh, dealing with inequalities. That when we're talking about inequalities, there's a special rule about graphing. We can use open holes. We can use filled in holes when we're talking about less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Uh, we can draw a line in, with an arrow on it that represents all of the uh, pieces that are less than or greater than or greater than or equal to, etc., etc. And then there's the rules about um, inequality. If I'm adding or subtracting from both sides, um, we do it just like we do e equalities. But there's a big deal when we find ourselves getting into multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative number. And that's the big deal right there. When we do that, then we have to turn the inequality around. So try to remember that. Try to do your homework and uh, be careful to look for when you might be multiplying or dividing by a negative number. And I hope that helps.